these two teams, playoffs can begin on Wednesday, maybe Saturday, but tonight, gorgeous evening in Orange County, California. Irvine playing host as Orange County Soccer Club tries to improve their fate in the playoff picture against the Fresno FC side locked into the number three seat. Joined by Gary Bailey, Mike Watts on hand. Here are how the standings look right now. And if you think about it, Real Monarchs are out of reach. So for Orange County now, just try and stay in the five, right? Yeah, absolutely. You want to do that. Plus, you want to end the season on a positive note. Both sides do. Both sides want to win. Both sides want to go into the playoffs with a, a confident outfit. And Fresno are the ones that are actually struggling more than Orange County. Orange County have been in unbelievable form. But if they drop this game, they could be going to Fresno <laughs> next Saturday night. So all kinds of question marks in this game. How about we take a look at your pro sport player to watch. Michael Seaton can score. He has scored. He hasn't done it recently. He's back tonight. Uh, but he can score almost whenever he wants to. He's got 12 this season. But it's with the left foot, it's with the right foot, it's with the header. He can hold up play. He can bring other players into play as well. So, yeah, let's just hope he, he starts hitting the back of the net. But what you're going to do is put the ball in his foot, and this is what happens. He can find the back of the net with ease. You just got to give him good service. So Michael Seaton looking to take advantage and add to his dozen goals on the air. Meanwhile, for Fresno, let's be honest, it's been a struggle in many ways on and off the field. Only one win in their last five. Yeah, and they've been so good before that. In fact, they've been absolutely fantastic before that. So what they've got to do is pick themselves up and find some form. But right now, they're looking a little bit vulnerable. Good time for Orange County to be meeting the mighty Fresno. They finally feel like they're back on track with a draw against Galaxy 2 last time out. Five losses the whole year. And then a shock three-game losing streak. Can Fresno turn it around? They're locked into the three. If Orange County doesn't win tonight, they may have to go to Fresno's place next week. We've got lineups kickoff. Week 33 continues after this. At Hogue Orthopedic Institute, there is no one better at getting you back to you. Canada Dry Ginger Ale and Lemonade. The perfect blend of real ginger taste with a splash of real juice. Are you ready to taste Nirvana? Hey, honey! Do we want to taste Nirvana? Yeah, sure! How long have you been sitting in my yard? Since Tuesday. Try new Canada Dry Ginger Ale and Lemonade. The Orange County Soccer Club Pro Experience Membership, designed to accelerate your training and enable you to reach the professional performance levels of the biggest leagues around the world. Membership includes free tickets to seven home matches, training sessions with coaches and technical director Franz Hoke, live events with leading soccer minds like Brad Friedel, Raphael Wicke, and Keisuke Honda, and many additional benefits. Go to orangecountysoccer.com slash pro experience. Welcome back, everybody. Championship Soccer Stadium in Irvine, California. Week number 33 in the USL Championship. These teams could see each other in a knockout stage in the quarterfinals a week from now. It all depends on the result here today. M4 Brayton Clutes here. His lineup brought to you by Adidas. They've made a few changes. Yeah, two changes from the team that won 3-2 at Sacramento. Michael Seaton for Darwin Jones. Christian Duke comes in for Chrysostomo. Those are the two changes they make. Otherwise, Duane Goals, as always, doing his thing. And Michael Seaton looking good up front. 
And meanwhile, starting lineup for Fresno also brought to you by Adidas, the official merchandise of the Orange County Soccer Club. And three changes from their team that drew 2-2 at home to LA Galaxy 2. Seth Moses is back after a long uh, time out with injury. He replaces Ali Hatzic. Kudos to Wall and Jaime Chavez up front. They replace Juan Pablo Caffa and Christian Cheney. They are without some significant pieces as well. But Johnson and Luol both being asked to shoulder the offensive load. Vinicius looking on. In what for both teams amounts to their regular season finale. For Fresno, four winless. For Orange County, it's been a little inconsistent. But they've turned their season entirely on its head midway through and have locked up a playoff position. Referee checks his watch. Here we go in Orange County from Irvine. It's Orange County Soccer Club in Fresno FC. Yeah, this is a big match for both sides. You, you want to get into the playoffs on the right form with the right attitude, the right feeling in the locker room. You know, a bad game today for either side. And then there's question marks. And for Fresno already, there's quite a few question marks after a really bad run. So, so unlike them, one point from the last 12 after an incredible run before that. Orange County, having said that, they're in unbelievable form. Eight wins from the last 10, five clean sheets. That's the perfect form to go into the playoffs with. Time for the Hogue Orthopedic Institute injury report. Trotter remains out. Basulovic out. Jackson has actually flown to Brazil. The shoulder injury, his season is over. And that is a giant loss. They're without Alex Cooper as well. A knee injury, he was questionable coming in. It's just not ready yet, Gary. Are you gonna get that in a season? You're gonna get injuries, especially in a long season like this, going into the playoffs. It's up to those who come in to, to fill those gaps, be the replacements, and and cover all the gaps necessary. Nice start for Orange County getting into the final third. Van Wolfgang couldn't combine. Further by Alston, taken by Elijah Martin. He's gone from a bit player, one that's expected to start week in and week out, and it will likely remain that way with Cooper and Jackson missing in action. He's a good little player, Elijah Martin. Quick, a lot of pace. Played him a lot in the midfield, on the left side of midfield, but he can also drop back into that left fullback position, do a really good job. Loading up again, this time through Alston. Forrester. And he'll take a deflection en route towards Seton. And Moses has that carom off of him, his first game in four months. It's great to see him back. It's horrible when you get these long injuries as a player and you sit out for month after month and you even wonder if you'll ever get back sometimes. And the only way to do it is to get back on their pitch, play, get through a really good match, a tough match, and come out unscathed. And that's what we really hope today here for Seth Moses. Broken foot makes you wonder just how much his fitness will come into play in terms of substitutes for Fresno. By the same token, by being locked into the three seed by virtue of Real Monarchs win earlier this afternoon. If you have to burn a sub on taking them off 45 or 60 minutes in as you're holding midfielder, it's really not the end of the world. It's not because I, I reckon that, that Adam Smith wants to find out just, just can Seth get back to his best very quickly? Can he still use him in these playoffs or not? He's going to find out this evening in a match which, as you say, it's a, it's a match that isn't of vital importance. It's important because you want to get a, a win and, and keep you know and get back to a good run, but if you lost it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Slipped out wide, Ellis Hayden pushing forward. Jaime Chavez and Hume is there to knock it away. Jaime Chavez is a crucial, crucial player for Fresno. Scored plenty of goals this season, 12 in total. Find his way back in the team. He's given a bit of a rest, and I think he's hopefully, from a Fresno point of view, ready to get back in in time for the playoffs. Seaton sends it back, and it's into the county line coalition end. A couple of losses for Orange County recently came with a toothless attack. It's been a month since Michael Seaton has scored. Orange County has picked up some significant wins during that time, though. Pretty amazing when you think about it. This is an Orange County team that was in 14th place 
not too long ago, what, <laughs> two and a half months ago, to get yep. up to the fourth or fifth position at the time. That's exactly what the coach is hoping for. Brayden Cloutier said fourth or fifth is a good goal. You win this game, you're in fifth. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a brilliant response. And if you're looking for an informed team coming into the playoffs, a team that's in better form than Fresno, who are above them, a team that's in better form than Phoenix Rising, can I just add, that team is Orange County. That's all that counts in the playoffs. It's just, you know, getting your form right, getting a little bit of luck on the day, getting the results. And nobody asked, where did you finish in regular season? They asked, did you win the playoffs? County trotting into the final third. Boy, the wall sent that the wrong way. It was a good effort, wasn't it? I'm almost <laughs> concerned that that was a deliberate back pass. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just pleased that, that Cochran was on his goal line because that would have gone oh. over his head. That would have been goal of the season. <laughs> CJ's just there, sees it nice and clearly, and pulls that one out of the night sky, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad effort. <laughs> Goals that way. Look this little wall. Maybe a bit disoriented. Sent into the Fresno half and Daly back to Cochran. Well, they wanted a guy who could come in and be the guy. They found him all 34 games. C.J. Cochran has started, and sadly for Sam Howard, he's had to sit on the bench. Never easy when you're the second choice keeper and the first choice is, is consistent, and solid, and good, and, and that's exactly what C.J. Cochran has been. And he's got some decent center, center backs in front of him, and Don Campo and Mickey Daly. They have been solid. Zach Ellis Hayden on the right-hand side also been a regular. They need to get back that little extra form that they've lost the last few uh, games. Don't know how it slipped away from Adam Smith. He needs to get it back. Pressure arriving by way of Lou Wall, who's been dancing around the midfield throughout. Ian Alston are having a few words. Wall's going to talk himself right into the referee's book 10 minutes in. Header snap back. He thought he had a little help behind him. Didn't arrive from Vinicius. Maul Johnson. Didn't slide through. Zacharias Hayden, crucial player from down that right-hand side. He's their, he's their overlap king. There he goes right now. And if they can feed him the ball, he gets a lot of service in that box. Nice idea from Kurimoto. Chavez has gotten in behind. Dewey slipped and fell, trying to recover. And Fresno able to keep it in front of them. Johnson from Moses. Johnson early ball. That gets lofted away, and Orange County a bit on their heels. It's a good test for Orange County. They've had such a wonderful run in these last 10 matches. This will test them tonight, and also gets him in the right frame of mind as we see that Zach Ellis Hayden just flicking that ball on. Turn, keeper can't get there, and they just managed to clear it OC, but this is like a playoff game, isn't it? Two top, top sides, and it's a good test for both of them as they go into the playoffs. Michael Orozco was the one who slid down been at any further trouble. Jamal Johnson. Johnson streaked in, won it. Early cross, Yao trying a second time. Another corner for Fresno FC. Good early pressure from the visitors, hunting around the box. Yao big and strong, winning that ball and trying to get balls into the box. Some pressure for Frederick Dewey, who's been in excellent form, made some crucial saves, and Coach Braden Cloutier talking him up and saying how, how important the signing he's been. Ball 
Bouncing down inside the 18, and that clearance will head toward Braden Cloutier himself. Braden is second year at the helm for Orange County. We got in contact with Jimmy Nielsen. He praised the scouting staff for trying to find another experienced goalkeeper. Previous plan didn't really work out. Frederick Douay was wasting away in Hartford as Cody Crawford come into the equation there. Jimmy Nielsen said, I think you might have one of the best goalkeepers USL Championship. Make no mistake, Jimmy Nielsen has every right to say that. Orange County feels like that is absolutely accurate. They've also got Oren Cervantes, the uh, U17 USA player, who's a wonderful, wonderful talent. A little bit inexperienced to be a regular for OC at this stage, but he could be the future of the club. And well done to them for developing players that can make the national team. He's in camp in Holland, and that was part of the reason they went after Douay in the first place. Great for Cervantes to get that opportunity. Time to shine in the sun, but you want a veteran in the playoffs, and in the meantime, Cervantes won youth national team call-up. This will get all the way out. All current season ticket holders. You renew your same amount of seats and pay in full by Halloween, October 31st. You receive free OCSC Adidas jacket. First time season ticket buyers have the chance to get all home playoff games for free by placing a deposit of $50 per seat today to reserve your seats now. Call 949-647-GOAL. As of now, Orange County will happily play on the road against Real Monarchs in the first round. But if they lose, they may find themselves at home on Wednesday. Coming off his line, TJ Cochran, enough to wrest that ball away from Seton. And again, we spoke about it before the match, how strong Seton is as a runner with the ball at his feet. Look at this, the power, the strength. Direct, gets into the box there, slows down in. Increases again, only the keeper comes out and makes a really good and brave save in his feet. Michael Seaton has come in with the appropriate amount of excitement. OCSC corner kick fueled by Shell Fuel Rewards. Tax now 83835. Download the app, begin saving on fuel. Luol. the wall doesn't want to make a mess of that Chavez Johnson with a bit of giddy up Kuramoto the point of the spear here in a one-man pressing effort and the, the coach talking about Kuramoto and saying what a solid player he is Adam Smith he really feels that he's been one of the best players this season Puts in a performance every single week without question. You're almost taken by his story, flying from Japan on his own dime, coming to a, a tryout in Fresno, wanted an opportunity to be a professional, was a great player in the Japanese league playing for Honda. So he was working for Honda but also playing on the club team associated with them. So he gave up a pretty decent gig, ultimately be a pro full time. And in Fresno, he has made himself a, an incredible commodity, even though he maybe lacks elite pace. Well, he's got a good touch, he's got a good motor, as you would do, working for Honda. And he gets <laughs> up and down <laughs> the pitch. <laughs> But it, I, I agree with you, any player who comes on a trial and performs and gets a contract, credit to them for believing in themselves and turning up and having the, the confidence to actually play and impress the manager. That's a talking to for Joe Amico, 24-year-old from Indianapolis. I'd be very surprised if this is a nasty match tonight. I think this is a little bit of bad timing. There wasn't a follow through, his hands go straight up. Neither team has to win this. It's not a playoff match as yet. So I would, I would think to be very surprised if Templars do get up. And you can see right away the players just apologizing to each other. Kiri, I'm not sure if there's a, a time in your time playing with Manchester United where maybe you had 
an opponent in in the Premiership, and then maybe a cup game against them, an FA Cup or such, the following week. But that's the potential right here, that the regular season ends in a way that these two teams play again. I, I just wonder how much that plays into the mentality on either side with just how much you're willing to throw at one another on set pieces in terms of tactical wrinkles. That's a good question, and there isn't an easy answer to it. I have been in that situation, and you sort of, you don't put 100% into these games. You put a lot of effort, sure, but you don't, you don't risk life and limb in this match. But when it comes to the cup game, that you do go flat out. That's why I don't expect any, any bad tackles here tonight, but should they meet again in a week's time? Different story <laughs> altogether. Then Gary is expecting a steel cage death match on the field. <laughs> Yeah, if it gets like that, it's absolutely. You do whatever you can to, to, you know, fluster the other team. And if that means getting a little bit physical and getting in their faces, and that's what you do. Spoken like a true goalkeeper, you get to stay. <laughs> it's been pleaded once upon a time, I would imagine. Just a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Quarter hour in, and the referee laying down the rules of combat. Seaton and Chavez are not all that friendly right now. He's going to have a little word. Just tell them what to do. It's so difficult at set pieces because who gets to stand where, and especially around the goalkeeper when you try and block the goalkeeper's path. What can you do? What can't you do? Can you lift your hands? You can't hold on to players, but you could certainly put an arm in front of them to restrict their movement. So it's always difficult for referee. There's always pushing and shoving going on in almost every single set piece. And a few words between the players continues. <laughs> driven across <laughs> scores from around the championship that Sacramento loss to Real Monarchs May have sealed Orange County's fate to go to Salt Lake City next week. Reno blowing out Tulsa. That ends Fresno's dream of finishing second. Means the road for them to a USL Championship Western Conference Final will run through Reno and Phoenix potentially. New Mexico one up against Las Vegas. Still alive. Still alive and kicking. Las Vegas only need to overturn a 13 goal difference to uh, make the playoffs. No, that's not going to happen, <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, not, with, not if they're down one nothing. it's not. Played over to Martin, but he lost it. Gave it away cheaply. We're on to Cochran. Vinicius with the ball there. His first touch was very poor. And if your first touch is poor, your head is down trying to retrieve the ball. You can't see where the runners go. And then your pass doesn't end up being an accurate one. That's why your first touch on a ball is so, so important. Campo, he lifts it away. CJ with his left foot, which clearly isn't his better foot because the ball goes straight out into touch. It's a bit of a festive vibe at the, at this, the pitch here. Music in the background, drums are being played. But those two are unrelated. The drums aren't from the meat. Are they not? <laughs> I mean, there's two, there's two <laughs> bands playing here. 
looking, it is a very, very busy day at Orange uh, Gray Park. Baseball and softball and obviously uh, OCSC playing. There's a DJ in the building. Best of indeed. Why wouldn't they be? Orange County have been in such fantastic form. Everyone's excited for the playoffs coming up and they've got the visit of Fresno who have been wonderful this season. And as you say, the two might meet next weekend. So maybe a reason for excitement in the stadium tonight. As far as to estimate this could be one of the better crowds for Orange County this year. The stand there on the left-hand side is looking uh, fairly full. Of course, some stragglers in traffic. That's part of the course. 20 minutes gone. Fresno's locked into the three. Orange County is watching matches around them right now in the championship. See precisely what they need. It has been a wild day, especially in the Eastern Conference. As it stands right now, New Mexico has moved above San Antonio and into the playoff picture. San Antonio level. New Mexico leads by a goal. That would put them in. Orange County remains in the five at this current nil-nil scoreline. As Galaxy 2 leads against El Paso. Well, you're right, it's given us great entertainment in both the East and the West. Luol making a run. This is way too strong for him. It's a bad cross from Chavez. He knows it. He's just apologizing. You could see what he wanted to do. You could see Kudis at the far post. Try and just obviously put it on his head, but skies off the edge of his boot and out for a goal kick. Have a look at it again. Good use of his body. Chavez, nice and strong. Head up, sees him, and then just misconnects. Kudos has got his arms out saying, I was free, I was available. Just get it on my head. I'm just talking about the East and West conferences and these final games, but Watching St. Louis go out this evening is a huge blow because they they were fantastic in the US Open Cup. They had a wonderful run to the quarterfinals with a loss to Atlanta United. And you felt that they, because of that, they deserved to be in the playoffs, if you can understand my logic. And they missed out after a, a bad run. They lost in four or five games. They failed to win a game and they lost virtually every game. And they went from being securely in the playoffs to just slipping out. Such a blow for a very good St. Louis team. Think about New Mexico. They were in first when the Open Cup began, made the quarterfinal themselves. Yeah. Yeah. They're now in 10th. They look like they're on the right side of the bubble, but San Antonio's now in the 87th minute, beneficiary of two, two penalties. They led 2-0 and conceded twice what? to Colorado Springs in the final 20 minutes, including an own goal. Drama. Painful. Gosh. <laughs> This has been something else. This is the game I think everyone had circle going. Here is the drama, and it's, uh, it's pittered out a tad. But still important for both sides. Quite. Put the performance level, the way they play, getting themselves into the right groove ahead of the playoffs. And for Fresno, just to turn around what's been a really rough patch the last four or five games. Driven away by Cochran. Played up the left-hand side and expertly kept in. A couple moves from Van Wolfgang. Daly. Johnson. That's a foul from Orozco. Check out new OCSC merchandise arrivals for 2019, including new authentic jerseys the players are wearing by Adidas at orangecountysoccer.com. Look at this run. 
Vinicius. Boy, that was well defended by Martin to close him off. Yeah, he pushed him wide and he got himself stuck in the corner, Vinicius, but he played himself back out of it, so credit to him. Seaton struggling to maintain. Forrester. Alston. There's Orozco. I mean, we talk about young players coming up through Orange County. I mean, forget that. Orozco has been there, done that, won the T-shirt. 29 caps for the national team for the United States and coming back home. Absolutely. And Braden Clute here talking about how, how what a wonderful player he is to have around and how he calms everybody down. Seaton took it away, whips this through. Whip is, <laughs> is pretty much the explanation. He actually thundered that ball in. If you were thinking of heading it, you'd probably duck to get out the way. <laughs> Have a look at it again. It's more like a shot than a cross, but he does well here, Seaton. Again, strong upper body power. Gets his head up, sees a couple of players in there, and thumps that across the face of the goal. Yeah, sends the decapitator. <laughs> Johnson. Driving on to doing there for the Foxes. And the sound man having his fun at their expense. So Ellis Hayden. Not his finest shot, I would suggest. <laughs> that wasn't even close. That was just way over the crossbar. But let's just give him some credit for trying. I think he'll get some stick in the locker room though at <laughs> half time. What were you doing? Good hustling here from Fresno, just closing down. Kurimoto, there's Moses. Hasn't put a foot wrong yet. Hasn't necessarily done anything that made you made you go wow yet. I think it's his strength in midfield that they'll be looking at Adam Smith in particular. He's built so strong. He dominates. He wins the ball. Has he, you know, has that, that broken foot bothered him? Is he is he able to, to get stuck in and win those 50-50s like he used to? Or is he finding out as the match goes on? So far, he looks like he's in good form, Seth Moses. A nice ball for Yao on that wing that wasn't quite handled perfectly. He did his part. The wall had backed his head into Orozco. Something else for, for, for Fresno to work towards this evening is a clean sheet. One in the last 16 matches. One clean sheet. When you go into playoffs, and this applies to Orange County as well, keeping a clean sheet is step number one because, you know, then you've got a great chance of, of going through to the next round, of course. He's got to sneak a goal somewhere. And with one clean sheet in the last 16 for Fresno, it's going to be very worrying for their management team. Because you don't want to be conceding goals in a playoff, otherwise it means you have to score a whole ton of them and that's not always possible against other good teams. Moses. It'll be with Fresno. Seaton involved there tracking back. There are a fair number of the Fire Squad Fresno supporters that have made their way down the coast and into Orange County. Without digging too deep in their situation. It's been a, a difficult month, I think, for Adam Smith to get everybody their head on straight. But I think he made a really poignant point to us in, in describing the motivation as Dewey. Woo, blow by. <laughs> so on the wall. Yeah. Send it's, a postcard. Yeah, it's great when it works. But Adam Smith told us you could be a pro for 10 years and never be in the scenario you're in yeah. right now. So play like it. Be professionals in that moment. 
hundred percent. You're a professional in any moment. Oh, yellow card. Kudos for lunging in. But yeah, as a as a professional, you've got to take every chance that comes your way to get some glory. And it's waiting for Fresno, and it's waiting for Kudos Lawal if he can keep himself on the pitch. Oh, he slipped, and that's what he's saying. And to be fair to him, he did slip. So that's not worthy of a yellow ref. Come on. Head's been buried in the disciplinary report. Look at this run. Slid away. Michael Seaton nearly breaking through. Because you can't get a yellow card accumulation suspension. What you can get is a fine in lieu of an accumulation suspension if you hit that number. So players are loading up the uh, the coffers right now tonight, even if they are eligible to play next week. So who pays that fine, the player himself or the club on behalf of the player? I mean, if it were me, and I clearly it's not, I would be much more likely to have yellow cards on my resume if the club was paying for it. Which means the club won't play for it because they don't want the player to right. get the yellow cards. And right. The players don't get paid that much, so they're not going to want to get a yellow card. <laughs> Chip forward and out is Cochran to snag it. Cochran doing a barrel roll. And then the foul from Orozco. Good throw out from the keeper to Jaime Chavez. He wins the free kick. Take a pass and short. You can join this festive atmosphere because OCSE group tickets are a great way to enjoy an evening of soccer with your community. You can save up to 50% off single game prices. You schedule a group of 10 or more. Ask about game experiences, group leader incentives, orangecountysoccer.com. Fresno launching into the final third. Zach Ellis Hayden doing so well on that right hand side. He often plays as a right wing back or attacking right midfielder, and at the same time gets back and does his defensive duties. That's why it's such a crucial outlet on that right-hand side for Fresno. Yeah, there's your music. It's my well, some of it. It's my man. <laughs> now you've got, you got to find the drummer and the DJ. <laughs> and <laughs> Gotta be buzzing after the game. Oh. This could be a dangerous free kick out wide. Got some big boys in the middle there. Mickey Daly, Ramon Martin, Del Campo. They can get up, they can get their heads on the end of things. If it's a decent ball here from Jamal Johnson, it could cause all sorts of problems. Boy, the drama for the bottom two spots in the playoffs. Ball line across toward Daly, punched away by Dewey. Wow, oh wow, things have taken a turn. It's a good punch from the goalkeeper. He's made a massive difference, hasn't he? Comes out and dominates that set piece and punches that ball clear. That's what you need if you're going to win things in any any soccer anywhere in the world, your goalkeeper is one of your most important players. A good, consistent, confident goalkeeper doesn't make errors. It's the foundation for successful teams. And Frederick Duo looks looks the business. You see the scores rotating there at the top of your screen. What has just gone final in the last minute? San Antonio finishes level. They give up two goals in the last 25 minutes that take away their ability to secure the 10th and final playoff position. They have dropped to 11th in the live standings. And now New Mexico with a win, and they currently lead at the half, one goal to nil, are into the playoffs. A draw is not enough. Wow, drama, drama. It's so tough in San Antonio, the dying, dying moments, 2-0 up. Mm. And you can see two late goals. 
Yellow card coming to Moses. I mean, four months off. This is, to be frank, not much of a surprise. Moses is right back in the book. Well, if we were asking, can he, can he get stuck in? The answer is absolutely yes. But you got to stuck in the right way. Just, just mistimes times that, and he's, Vinicius almost tempts him and says, "Come on, see if you can win." And as he comes with, he knocks the ball away. Maybe he's lost a little bit of timing while he's been out, but now that he's on a yellow, he's going to have to watch himself very carefully for the rest of the match. Also, Galaxy 2 playing a game with significant implications, not only for their playoff hopes, but also for Orange County. They lead El Paso 1-0. El Paso needs a win to jump Orange County in the standings. That would set up a Fresno OCSC game next week. Meanwhile, Tacoma's up on Austin. Oh, golly, that punch from Cochran was lacking, to say the least. That, that, that free kick has got way too much time on it. You, what you're saying to the goalkeeper is, here's a ball, come and get it, or come and punch it, which Cochran just manages to do. But you've got to whip the ball in, keep it away from the goalkeeper. Again, it's well, you can't see the flight of it, but it's dropping down. It gives the keeper so much time in the end, he's almost got too much time and he just punches it. Well, that ball gets away from the line, it's uh, still an attack on through Aiden Quinn. Circles back, curled cross from Van Wolfgang, taken up by Christian Duke, and crossed again. Header toward the line, saved by Daly, denies Seaton. That's a great recovery there from Daly. Seaton gets up brilliantly. The goalkeeper, CJ Cochran, has come and got nowhere near the ball. Goalkeeping error. Seaton wins the header. Daly acrobatically clears that ball off the line just as it's about to cross into the back of the net. Fresno very lucky to avoid conceding there. Seaton, as Orange County's wave continues to grow. And Martin puts it out for a corner. That's the way Orange County described this recent run. A wave, another look at this. Great defending, great stretch from Nicky Daly, but his goalkeeper's gonna have to give him a thanks because CJ Cochran got nowhere near that ball. There it is. Nice slap there at the back end from Cochran. Fuel rewards corner. Header knocked down, Seaton climbed a ladder and then strapped a rocket on his back and then made contact. Once again, CJ not dominant in the air there and a few of his players just giving him a tap on the back as if to say, come on, you need to get those. Let's have a look at it again. Michael Seaton climbs high, CJ's going backwards. He's late lifting his arms up. Look at his arms, they're down. He starts to lift them at the very end and Michael Seaton's already up in the air. It's twice in two minutes here that CJ struggled on cross balls. In fact, there was one before that, but he punched out and barely made contact. So, yeah, lucky not to have conceded. And you get to the end of the year and you talk to coaches a little bit, describe the ups and downs of the year. And Adam Smith said, look, as a former goalkeeper myself, no greater critic in this club <laughs> of CJ Cochran than me. And it, you know, luckily, the, the shoulder sling is, is off now for Adam Smith can actually warm his goalkeepers up he, once again. He can do a demo for the keepers. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, but, um, uh, I think when they watch the video tomorrow or the next day, I think uh, they'll have a quiet word with CJ. Because you can't make those sort of mistakes in the playoffs. No, not get, next week. No. Exciting half. I mean, yes, yeah. there's no goals, but there's been chances of good play and quality from both sides. Commitment. And some balls in the box from set pieces and crosses that have caused a few problems. So certainly enjoyed this, but at the same time, I think the crowd would like a goal, preferably from the home side as far as the crowd are concerned. Moses that made its way across. Chavez. I was interested to see how this front two would work together, Chavez and Lawal. And it seems like neither are necessarily playing as true target men or true, you know, leave it out in front of them and let them run onto it. It's not really quite their skill set. 
and yet they're, they're a good combination because they're both goal scorers. 22 goals between them. There are other options like Christian Cheney, who himself has only got, well, he's got four goals in 18, so not quite the same goal scorer. I think what Adam's hoping is that the two of them up front, Kudus and Jaime, will, will get the goals between them somehow. Turn between two of the two front players, 22 goals. When you consider the wall came in after last year, scored against Club Leon in Mexico in a friendly at Chuck Chancy Park, signed a pretty small deal financially by Adam Smith's own admission, and then goes on a goal scoring binge, Jaime Chavez being the the new striker that they brought in to ultimately replace a significant piece of their team from a year ago who left for Europe. It's pretty incredible what they've done together. That's been a fantastic Fresno performance all season, no question about that. But then to be fair, Orange County last season were amazing and towards the end of this season have been amazing again. So I think there's two clubs who've really manage themselves well have got the results have got the performances and i think we're seeing tonight that two teams that must cancel each other out they're both very very good in defense very good in attack and at this stage haven't been able to separate them well set pieces for fresno very good this year they are they've got an amazing amazing record or 25 goals of their 58 have come from set pieces that's 43 percent from free kicks, corners, penalties. Angel so, Moreno coming up with a good stat there. I think he'd like a second try at this, if we're being honest. McCord going in there for pushing and shoving on Daly. Oh, looks like, no, it's Lewall on Kudas. second for that. Wow. Kudas Lawal sent off for his second yellow in the 42nd minute. Unless he, unless he threw a punch, that's very harsh, especially when you know it's a second yellow. And I was looking for an explanation. We did say when Kudos got the first one, that was an unlucky slip. He shouldn't have. I thought it was a bit harsh to give him the yellow when he slips, but he's upset. He probably feels he doesn't deserve it. It's wrong. And let's see if we can get a replay. Here we go. Let's see exactly what happened getting held by number nine and see anything. It's hard to miss. Maybe the ref saw something we didn't see, but he's being held, if anything. Tough one. Tough one for Fresno. Tough one for Lawal. Are we saying about a fine for yellow card accumulation and red cards? Well, uh, I'm currently reaching out to league representatives to find out if a red card carries into the playoffs. Yellow card accumulation doesn't. A red card? I, I, I've never actually come across that scenario in the last game of the regular season. Interesting. And boy, would that change absolutely everything. And Adam Smith, I think, Rightfully pretty incensed right now. That is at least based on what we saw pretty staggering. But again, the referee might have seen something else or thought he saw something else. He's gonna call it in live time. <laughs> Moses <laughs> pops back to his feet. That's a perfect 10 on the landing. Curling this back Forrester, Alston. Well, now if you're Orange County, impetus on you. Get the job done, right? Quinn. Hasn't that been the way it's all the bad luck for Fresno in these last sort of five or six games after a fantastic form where it was all working for them? Now struggling, struggling to get results, struggling to get points. Three wins in nine games five defeats in that time it just it's gone from being absolutely perfect to where they're getting players sent off for what didn't look like too much to be honest again maybe the referee saw something we didn't and if he sees a punch or anything similar then well that would have been a direct red i guess but 
if he saw what we saw, and bearing in mind the first yellow was very iffy, as Kudas just slips, I think that's very harsh. It changes the dynamics of a match. When you get a red card, you know, I know they're looking at the rules. Let's just watch this. Go! Orange County! Quinn with picture perfect precision. And OCSC off the set piece lead right before the half. Forrester. Excellent header at the near post. Poor defending from Fresno, but a brilliant corner whipped in with pace. Headed into the back of the net. Moments after Fresno go down to 10 men. And we talked about Fresno being good from set pieces. How's this from Orange County? That, that's a perfect near post corner. Forrester gets ahead of all the others, gets up, flicks it absolutely brilliantly into the back of the net orange county they just go from from good to better to best they're in unbelievable form at the moment forester's third 45th minute and orange county with a one goal lead and a one-man advantage nearing halftime two added minutes here before the break. That wasn't just a lucky corner. That wasn't just whipped in and hoped for the best. Harry Forrest has made a run to the near post. They've kept bodies out. And he's made a late run to avoid being picked up. He's got in front of all the defenders. The ball in has been absolutely perfect from Quinn. And his head has been brilliant. A well-worked free kick has delivered the vital goal for Orange County. Alston dumps off some of the tape he had. A league spokesman tells me now red card suspensions do carry to the playoffs. And wow. while I imagine Kudus Lawal's upcoming suspension will almost assuredly see its day in court in front of the disciplinary committee, his uh, very ability to play is now in question for Fresno in the first round of the playoffs next Saturday. It's a tough, tough break for him. Oh, keeper just coming out, CJ Cochran. They weren't taking any chances. And Ron Martin Del Campo just sticking that out of touch. But that would be, a, it is such a blow for Kudos for a while. If he'd, have, if he'd had his boot up, if it was a late tackle, if he'd swung a punch, I get it. But neither of those seem worthy of a yellow. Again, from what we could see, and again, the referee might see it, have seen something different, but I saw him being pulled more than him doing anything, but anyway, it's been done. We must just get used to it and hope Fresno win the playoff match. They can play in the next match after that. Quite, quite a good idea if you're a Foxes fan or Kudus Wall for that matter. Bouncing ball in front. There's Cochran, and Fresno is staring down that ugly number going into the break. 0-5 and 2 when they trail at halftime. They can see by way of a set piece, Quinn to Forrester, and Orange County looks in position to grab hold of the number five seed. They certainly do. Great goal, Harry Forrester. Good run to the near post. Great flick on. They won the lap. They've got the extra man. They're at home with this wonderful crowd. You would expect Orange County to go on and build from here. Well, this crowd, you said it. They just wanted a goal, and they wanted it from their home side and yes they got it it's a little bit of a learning experience bring your instrument tonight orange county grabs the goal just short of halftime luol sent off forrester the goal got highlight stats look around the league all coming up when we return What makes my famous brisket, chicken marinade, and punch so good? A lemon lime secret ingredient I'm never going to tell. 7-Up. 
Who's hungry? Do more with seven. The Orange County Soccer Club Pro Experience Membership, designed to accelerate your training and enable you to reach the professional performance levels of the biggest leagues around the world. Membership includes free tickets to seven home matches, training sessions with coaches and technical director Franz Hoke, live events with leading soccer minds like Brad Friedel, Raphael Wicke, and Keisuke Honda, and many additional benefits. Go to orangecountysoccer.com slash pro experience. Welcome back, folks. There is still smoke billowing here after Orange County grabs the lead right before the halftime break over Fresno with Gary Bailey, Mike Watts. This result would make sure that we don't see this matchup in the first round of the playoffs. As for Orange County, coming into this night, they could have finished as high as fourth, but that was stripped away from them. So this going into the late games, Orange County can finish as low as seven, but the way the result's going right now, it doesn't look like that'll be the case. That looks like they're going to keep that fifth spot. And all the action taking place further down with New Mexico United and San Antonio. And who's going who's to make it through, who's not? Austin is down right now. They are the one that could force Orange County into the play-in game. Sacramento already done. Sacramento, as of now, looks like a seven seed. They would host New Mexico if it ended again right now, but there's three games not going to affect this. It's <laughs> so what you want at the end of the season, the excitement, the drama. I can't believe San Antonio 2 0 up and in the playoffs and concede two late goals. Wow, that can't be a happy locker room at the moment. No, well, it won't be happy until they see a goal go the other way here on ESPN Plus. It's 1 0 to Orange County over Fresno. We've got plenty more coming up here as we've got highlights and stats from the first half coming up after this on ESPN Plus. you know, between, I would say, 10 and 12,000 a game. And it is a loud, boisterous 10,000, 12,000, and they love us, and we love them just as much. I mean, it's a reciprocal relationship at all times. We, we never thought that we would grow this fast. I have to pinch myself because you know, it sometimes seems too good to be true, but but it's not. Uh, it's been pretty unbelievable, and you know, it's been done better than I ever could have dreamt of, to be honest. So 
This is a club for New Mexico, by New Mexicans. And I don't think that we're done yet. It's just getting started. Well, they're not done yet as it stands right now. <laughs> Western Conference playoff picture is still coming into focus. This game does play a role. The number three seed Fresno trailing Orange County in the final game of the regular season. We take a look at news and notes from around the league. Pittsburgh now needs to win. Birmingham knows they're in the playoffs, but Pittsburgh wins. They're the number one seed in the East over Nashville. Yeah, I guess uh, Birmingham don't need to put out a strong team anymore. They can save their legs. They've got a midweek game. They can put out a second string team. Maybe it ends up being an easy match for the Riverhounds. Maybe it doesn't. And believe it or not, <laughs> they could then meet again the next week because uh -huh. they could be the low seed. Pittsburgh could be the high seed. You never know. Final spot still up for grabs here. And the 2019 championship final will be live on ESPN2 November the 17th. Here's the Western Conference standings. These are live, one through eight, already in. Austin could leap up. These are live in the Orange County right now, credited with the three points. New Mexico credited with a win. LA credited with a win. San Antonio only a draw, so they're looking up. Tough for San Antonio. This last moment, the final day, 2 0 up, and you can see two late goals. If they do get knocked out, it's terrible for them. Terrible, terrible. But for New Mexico United, what a brilliant turnaround. A great start to the season. Then shocking time. And now it looks like they've just scraped themselves back in to the playoffs. The road to the 2019 USL Championship final begins next week with play-in games. Full slate of conference quarterfinals. Specific match dates and times at uslchampionship.com. The upcoming schedule here brought to you by Destination Irvine. And this is if it ended right now. Yep, some good matches, some great games, in fact. And New Mexico United might scrape in. Who's to say they can't go to Sacramento and win and take themselves through to the next round? So everything to play for. I just think it's been a wonderful ending for both Eastern and Western conferences. Brilliant, brilliant drama. I refuse to say this is over yet. <laughs> it's not done yet. How many minutes left in the New Mexico match? Another 30. Orange Ooh. County, 1-0 lead. 45 minutes to go here. Fresno down a man. We'll show you how it all happened when we come back. At Hogue Orthopedic Institute, there is no one better at getting you back to you. chance to win free fuel for a year. That's one of thousands of prizes in the Shell Great Gas giveaway. Fuel Rewards members are automatically entered when they fill up at Shell. What makes my famous brisket, chicken marinade, and punch so good? A lemon lime secret ingredient I'm never going to tell. 7-Up. <laughs> Who's hungry? Do more with 7-Up. Welcome back to Irvine, Orange County ahead of Fresno 1-0. They've got a lead and they've got a man advantage. 45 minutes down, let's show you how it all happened. Tonight's highlights are brought to you by 7-Up. Do more with 7-Up. 
From the opening whistle, two teams both guaranteed playoff positions. Where would they land? Fresno getting into the final third first. Chavez doing really well here. Tries to get the ball across to Kudos for a while, but it gets cleared. Good flick on from Zach Ellis Hayden. Jaime Chavez does really well. Good clearance there from Michael Orozco. Former U.S. international stepping in. Meanwhile, Michael Seaton has come back with his hair on fire. He's been outstanding. And CJ makes a really brave save because Michael Seaton, as you say, burst down that left-hand flank. Now a ball coming in high over the top. Michael Seaton wins the header off the line by Mickey Daly. Absolutely brilliant there. CJ Cochran flapping in the wind and his big center back saves the day for the, the big man in goals. Great, great clearance. Move forward to the 37th minute. It's Seaton again rising up. And CJ again who's beaten in the air. And the reason why we mention that is because from, from corners and set... Oh, this, by the way, this is the first yellow. Kudos to all slips as he's making a tackle. And then this is meant to be a push in the face of Seaton, and it's given as a second yellow. The argument being, as that looked more like a straight red, that in trying to run through the challenge, his elbow got up into the head of his mark. Eh, difficult but Orange County doesn't care. 45th minute, they grab the goal, Forrester. Great corner, isn't it? Harry Forrester runs into that space. It's a well-worked goal. He knew what he was doing. It's a fantastic head. A lovely ball in from Aidan Quinn. Let's have a look at the stats for OC. Three shots, two on target. For Fresno, just the one shot, zero on target. So I think from a Fresno point of view, you can see where the problem is. They haven't created enough around the goals. They haven't peppered the goals and made Frederick Dewey work. OC certainly had managed to do that more so. And down to 10 men, Fresno. It's going to get even harder second half. They've got two yellow cards, one red. OC have kept themselves clean. No yellows, no reds. Those first half stats are brought to you by Pro Sport. And it is Orange County's thus far. Here's the scoreboard around the USL Championships Western Conference as it stands right now. It's brought to you by Courtyard Marriott. Reno locking up the two seed. It made this game academic for Fresno outside of their need to reestablish form. Monarchs officially the four seed made this game academic in terms of hosting in the quarterfinals for Orange County, but they still needed to win for seeding. And then the last three games, just trying to figure out the last two spots. New Mexico United one up at 67th minute, but they're at home. Come on, at home with that crowd behind them. And LA Galaxy 2 also just the one up, so two close games there. But well done, Harry Forrest. Lovely near post header. Well worked on. Here's a stat for you. The last four goals scored by Orange County, three have come from corners. Two of those against Sacramento and the one here tonight. Why do you sound so surprised? Well, I was talking Fresno up as the set-piece kings with nearly 43% of the goals from set-piece. Set-piece is Orange County are right up there as well. Well, Forrester's got the goal. We'll see what kind of adjustments Fresno will have to make with 10 men. Came so late in the first half that I didn't make a whole lot of sense to make changes at that stage. See if they decide to adjust now. That huddle a man short after the wall sent off. Sam Strong has come on, another defender. Just wondering if Devin Yao is still there. He might be the man that's been sacrificed. Of the second half we go. Orange County trying to seal the deal. Grab the number five seed with both hands and uh, punch their ticket to Salt Lake City for next Saturday. Player substitutions brought to you by Big Ones Inc. Devin Yao out, Sam Strong in. The problem for Devin Yao last week looked like a groin. In reality, a chiropractor came in there was a nerve that was being pinched, and like a miracle worker, the chiropractor came in, fixed the problem, and uh, Yao good enough to go 45 minutes. After all that hard work, it's Kudus Lawal's red card that means that Devin Yao can't play the 90 minutes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>
but Sam Strong coming in as a, a centre back. Will they go three at the back with Ramon Martin Del Campo and Mickey Daly and Sam Strong? And Elijah Martin and Zach Ellis Hayden as wing backs. We'll wait and see how it all shapes up, but that's one of the options they have. By the way, it sounds like the DJ is still there doing his thing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Ball ahead by Johnson Chavez, pulling in China shop, trying to force his way in. Is that Santana that I hear shredding in the background? Van Wolfgang sent it to the wrong side of Christian Duke. It's amazing how Duke's return coinciding with some other players finally getting healthy. The addition of Orozco, the addition of Duwe, the leadership for Orange County on the field, spurring that turnaround in August. They had six straight wins at one point. Well, you mentioned some vital players. Christian Duke obviously being one of them. Michael Orozco with all his experience and from a goalkeeping point of view, Frederick Duet, absolutely fantastic purchase to get him. And if you look at the, the playoffs coming up, the coach says, Breton Cloutier says, they're better placed than they were last year. Now, last year they won the title in the West. But he says they're better placed because they have more experienced players, players who went through the process last season anyway. He's got a stronger, more experienced team. So he thinks this is a better side than they had last season. Interesting. Time will tell. And of course, finishing first was with a, a warm pitcher of spit in the end because they end up losing to Phoenix on their home field. Yeah. He thinks this team can go all the way because they're more experienced and they might not lose that sort of game. The win tonight would actually put them on 10 road wins in the uh, in the uh, home season through 17 games make them the third best home record in the Western Conference tied with Fresno so home has been very kind to them they do have five wins on the road and they certainly are gonna shrink away from that I would think no, not the form they're in now Orange County I think they, they could feel they could take on almost anybody home or away Maybe they wouldn't want to take on Phoenix Rising just yet, but other than that, they'll feel very confident. It's all about the form at the right time, as people have often said about playoffs. And the most informed team in the West right now is Orange County. Well, Johnson's frustration starting to bubble up. Feels like over 10 games they've hit their top form. This is nine wins out of 11 if they win this today. Wow. <laughs> That's great for them. Wow. See how deep Fresno are now that they're down to 10 men. They're not even chasing the ball until it comes on the edge of their third of the pitch. Look at that. Letting Orange County have it 10 yards inside their half. Loaded forward. That's clever footwork there from Maul Johnson. Sometimes adversity before you go into the playoffs isn't always a bad thing. You don't get overconfident. You know it's going to be a scrap. You know it's going to be a fight. Fresno know that, hey, this might happen in the playoffs. They go down to 10. How are they going to do it? This is how they're going to do it. Sitting deep. Letting the other team have the ball. Low block, as they call it, and then trying to counter. That might be a good way to try and neutralize. Now, they are down to 10. It changes things. But maybe neutralize Michael Seaton a bit better. I think you can neutralize any attack by, by the low block. It's just difficult for you then to attack. You've got to have pacey players up front so you can defend in numbers, knock a long ball, and ask a quick attacker to try and get on the end of it. I don't think Fresno have that. Not anymore. Now that Kudos is off. They've got Jaime Chavez up front, but he's not a speed merchant system to play with the players they have and we were talking recently about Real Monarchs winning at Phoenix Rising 
And that's how they did it. They sat in a low block and they counter-attack Phoenix rising and they they gave the rest of the USL the blueprint as to how to beat the team of the season. Kurimoto tossed off the ball. That is terrific strength, physicality. Johnson went streaking in. Couldn't win it away from Forrester. It's not sexy, but I, I think you can look at you, you mentioned the Icelandic national team, yep. right? Is sort of setting that blueprint for the world. They did in 2016 in the Euro Champs. They played it, and everyone said you can't defend that deep, and they defended with all the numbers they could they could muster, and they were actually very difficult to beat. And I remember that because they beat England, <laughs> and and then one by one, teams that were struggling, who clearly weren't as good as the teams they were playing, dropped into this very low block, defending only the only the final third. And they also showed that it's a very difficult system to break down. And it's a system that Real Monarchs used against Phoenix Rising, and it worked for them. Look at that. Look at that. They're allowing the Orange Shirts to have it halfway inside their box. Satan. Slide there by Del Campo. Ellis Hayden tucking inside. It'll come away to Aiden Quinn. Duke. So if you're Orange County now, there's too many white shirts in the middle of the park. So the only way to really play against the low block is to get the ball wide, get width, and get in crosses. That's what they're trying to do now. Even there, they're even on the flanks, there isn't much space. Joe Amico. Cutting across. Duke unimpeded. Now run off by Kurimoto. Duke. Duke goes down. Free kick. This is inches outside the penalty area. Good turn from Duke there. Lovely little ball in, but brilliant, brilliant turn. And he was into the box and about to cause all sorts of problems. In the end, probably a good foul to give away as long as it's outside the box. Great little turn. This is what they're doing, probing around the edge of the box. Can they find a gap? That turn there. Top class. Now they've got a free kick in a real dangerous position. Cochran will set the wall. Debate here as to whether Harry Forrest is going to try with the right foot or Aidan Quinn perhaps with the left. It's over. And it is Forrester. Curling effort at Simmers and Cochran's bread basket. Yeah, what they were trying to do was get orange jerseys in front of CJ Cochran. In the end, they got out the way too early. It allowed the goalkeeper a clear vision of the ball. The idea is to stay right until the end so the goalkeeper can't see where that ball is going. Season ticket holders for Orange County Soccer Club renew the same amount of tickets. Pay in full October 31st. You receive a free OCSC Adidas jacket. First time season ticket buyers have the chance to get all the home playoff games for free. By placing a deposit of $50 per seat today. Reserve your tickets now. Call at 949 647 Gold. Lively night in Southern California. There's patience for Orange County. He's got to keep probing. Obviously, don't get dispossessed by Jaime Chavez, but he's uh, on his own up front there, and it's hard work for the big number nine. As far as Orange County is concerned, you just keep looking for little gaps, little chinks in the armor of Fresno's defense. You're one up anyway, so there's no real rush. You know they're getting tired because they've only got 10 men Fresno, so they're having to run those extra yards. Ball 
tap through, and Seth Moses is there. Moses, match fitness wise, hasn't played in four months. I do wonder whether he can go the distance. It's not the sub you're looking to make down a goal, down a man. Maybe one that's necessary. We've got the likes of one Pablo Cafu who can come on and just control things with his lovely passing ability. And you've got Bustamante as well and Ali Hajik. So you've got all sorts of options on the bench if you're Adam Smith. And again, it's not a match you have to win. You want to win, of course. You want to play well. But now the fact you're down to 10 men, you can very easily sort of write that one off and say, well, what do you expect? We only had 10 men away. And informed side like Orange County. So I don't think there's any desperation in Fresno's play and they're probably using this as a good example of of sort of strengthening your mind. You're one nil down. How do you play these sort of matches if they happen in the playoffs? So it's not the end of the world. If this was the playoffs, it is. It'd be a different story. It is the end of the world. <laughs> that world. Update elsewhere. Affects uh, playoff picture and Orange County coming in a moment. Ball to the feet of Seaton. Seaton got the ball away right at Cochran. LA Galaxy 2's lead now doubled. They're up two goals to nil against El Paso. Kamara and Zubak have scored there. That would secure a top six position for Orange County, which means they would avoid Wednesday night's play in and immediately begin on the road. New Mexico still leads Las Vegas. That's in the 81st minute, and these results would leave San Antonio out. It's one thing being San Antonio and being out, but when you're 2-0 up in a match you have to win, and you can see two late goals, that's the second for San Antonio. I mean, you must be at 2-0 up at home. You're cruising, going, yeah, that's it, we're in the playoffs. Happy days, the fans are singing, the manager's smiling, and then bang, bang, 2-2, two, two, and you're out. Tough being a pro footballer at times. And you see Tacoma's up on Austin. Austin would hold on to the eight seed by virtue of the win tiebreaker against Galaxy 2. So they would host Galaxy if it ended right now. And it doesn't. All these games are on ESPN+. Plus. Believe it or not, we are the only game right now that Darren Powell isn't watching in his locker room with his boys from San Antonio. And yet these two teams have every chance of going very far in the playoffs, if not all the way. I mean, Orange County's former have said it, we'll say it again, will be the most informed side in the West. And Fresno have been one of the top teams all season, so who's to say that we're not looking at potential champions? months ago and I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Vegas Vacation no no that's again it's some of these cultural things don't are you gonna do an impression for us again no, no, like no, you did no, last no, night no 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 <laughs> you know there's a, a a leak in the Hoover Dam and they stuck gum in it trying to yeah. plug the leak that's how Braden Cloutier tried to explain what they were going through <laughs> Oh, it's a suspension issue. Oh, this this visa didn't come through in time. That yeah. guy is suspended. National team call up. I mean, it was just something every day. Somehow they've come through it. Seaton did really well there. Paul <laughs> Johnson finds Ellis Hayden. Ellis Hayden sets it forward. Ellis Hayden is still gesturing for a foul. And he's left some space in behind Orange County to quickly run into. He's got to get himself back now, hasn't he? With it playing as a three at the back, with him as a wing back, he's got to get up and down that pitch. It's a lot of hard work. Okay. Low block, they just drop right back into the final third. Orange County wants it right there, they can have it. It's all about patience now. Try and find a little gap. 
Try and stretch them wide if you can. Walker Hume might be the solution. He's the one who, who created so much trouble against Sacramento with a header from the corner for one goal, and there's a long ball to Walker Hume for the second. I just wonder if Orange County has struggled, why they don't push him up front eventually. If you can't go through the middle and you can't go out, out wide, why not go over the top with your big man being Walker Hume? His brother is like equally sized and playing up front elsewhere. In the Nashville a year ago, Chrysostomo is set to come on for Orange County here. Player substitution brought to you by Big Ones Inc. Christian Duke, his regular season ends 15 games, a little over a thousand minutes. It's a year in which he himself dealt with injury, a freak injury in preseason, his brother Cameron. Well, he was laid out, signed a homegrown deal in Kansas City, which is where he initially led Swole Park Rangers to a USL championship final in the early stage of his professional career. And on comes Chris Ostomo in his stead. idea of a striker he can, works I trust know, me he worked yeah. against Sacramento he caused them all sorts of problems stick him up front for the last 10 minutes nice slip ball through that goes to Sam Strong Sam Strong center back they played him a bit at center forward earlier this year and they had some need big body let him you know throw those bows around but if you're a manager at this stage you're looking at, at ways in which this can impact on your on your playoff ability so the Braden Cloutier if he faces a team that play a low block, this is what he's going to face. So he's not upset that Fresno are doing this. He's thinking, this is good practice. How do we break down a low block? Conversely, Fresno looking at it going, hey, if we happen to play a team much better than us, or if we're down to 10 men, how do we play the low block? So it's all good practice. They're both through to the playoffs. No one's going to get knocked out tonight. It's really about just fine tuning a few positions, players and styles of play. When Hi there. And an obvious push. Van Wolfgang. It's a silly push from Van Wolfgang. You don't need to do anything. Zach Ellis Hayden is going nowhere. He's heading towards his own goal line. He's going to have difficulty getting the ball down the pitch. Why just this stand? Let him have the ball. Just stand there and wait for him to turn and see what he can do. That just takes the pressure off Fresno. Seth Moses, that's good news for Fresno at least, that he's got through 64 minutes or so, and looks as strong and as good as ever, fully recovered hopefully from his bad injury. It'll be a free kick for Fresno. Are you a Taylor Swift fan? Uh, my kids are. <laughs> <laughs> giving away my age, is it? No, as an unabashed Swifty. Very passionate Swifty, I, I guess. Johnson waiting for uh, Strong and Alston to get this figured out. Jamal Johnson and Frederick Douay hangs on. Not a good ball in at all. Way too much time in it. It's basically saying to Frederick Douay, come and catch this. Doesn't give any of his team a chance to, to get on the end of the ball and cause the keeper a few problems. This is for a team. Fresno got 42% of their goals from set pieces. 
Nato Bustamante comes on. Sub brought to you by Big Ones Inc. And Jaime Chavez comes out. Oh. Bustamante, a Fresno Fuego guy. Scored some, some big goals there. Excellent in preseason, signed a contract. Great game winner against Sporting Arizona last year in the Open Cup. And well, heading out there for Fresno FC at least one more time. He's got some work to do, fresh legs. Got to make a difference when you come on with fresh legs. Do a bit of extra work. And no strikers up front. Chavez off. The wild sent off. Those are your two main strikers. So it's up to the likes of Bustamante and Jamal Johnson to try and find this equalizer. Strong had a lot of work to do there. Stoppage time now in Albuquerque, New Mexico has gotten a goal from Albuquerque native Devin Sandoval in the 87th minute. They're up 2-0 against Las Vegas. Hey. <laughs> New Mexico will make the playoffs. Barring a collapse of unrecognizable proportion. Of San Antonio proportion. Yeah. Two up and you can see too late. And El Paso will need two goals in the next 23 minutes to spare San Antonio. An offseason full of blushes. And given that roster, one wonders what comes next for SAFC. Delighted for New Mexico United as newcomers and at the great start they had to the season. Delighted to see them actually make it through with a wonderful crowd support and look, look forward to seeing them many more times in the future. Love it when a club has has great support and you, you, get, in, you get happy for the fans when you see their team do well. Forrester's got the goal here, is in the 45th minute. It was shortly after Fresno's Kudis Little Wall was sent off. For Orange County, they started the day in fifth. They could have grabbed fourth, but they needed Real Monarchs to drop points. That did not happen. And so Orange County, with this result, will settle for fifth place, nine places above where they were a month and a half ago, two months ago, before this wonderful run of form has them as good as anybody in the league right now van wolfgang curling cochran has to parry it aside good strike from van wolfgang just bounced in front of the keeper so it wasn't a, a pile driver of a shot but great accuracy bending and cj had to get it around the post he had no choice Let's have a look at it again. You'll see, I think it just bounces in front of the keeper. It doesn't give it enough power to get all the way there, but the bounce itself can cause problems. Great accuracy, just bending inside that post. This OCSC corner kick fueled by Shell Fuel Rewards. Tax now 83835. Download the app, begin saving on fuel. Second ball lost by Cochran, and he argued successfully he wants to give him the space to make that catch. Well, he's got to punch it then. He's, he's, he has been a bit, a bit ropey today in the air. CJ, normally a very solid keeper, but when you come for those and you get challenged, maybe it's better just to punch it. Two fisted punch over the top, take a few players out in the process, try and hold it. I didn't see a foul from Michael Seaton. I just thought he jumped. Let's have a look. Does he hit the goalkeeper? No, he just jumps for the ball. So, again, some referees might not give that, and I don't think it's worth the risk. Vinicius comes out. Ivani Godoy comes on sub, brought to you by Big One Zinc. And Orange County will try and see this thing out. Current result would have them ticketed for Harriman, Utah. Gosh, is it a disappointment that one of those two teams would have to go out in that four or five game? Real Monarchs have had a very similar run of form. 
That's why it's the business end of the competition. That's where you've got to win these games and big teams go out if they're not able to win those games. Cross lifted toward Ellis Hayden. And a defensive header leads to a corner. And the sound man in the stadium, <laughs> I think, just pumped their own player. They're saying that uh, the I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> long ball through. Zacharias Hayden just quite, can't quite get on the end of a very, very good cross. Now some defending to do for OC and for Frederick Duane. Johnson. Header played forward. Seaton. Only one man back. They didn't do enough to exploit that. See the scores from this final day in the Western Conference in the USL Championship cycling up in the corner. Reno's win meant Orange County could not get above. Number five, San Antonio draw a struggle. Uh oh, Due denies Kurimoto. Kurimoto, you've got to finish that from a Fresno point of view. That's a gift for you. Sort of rushed it, but good save again from Due. He's made a, a couple of crucial saves. He hasn't been that busy, but the saves he has made have been top notch. But what a good chance for Kurimoto. Poor back pass here, absolutely shocking, shocking back pass from Chrysostomo. He knew straight away as he played it. Oh, look at Zach Ellis Hayden. He, he tells us, his face tells the story. Boy, that was some kind of uh, whirlwind of emotion, those, those camera shots, huh? <laughs> Due in the background. Uh, you're struggling for, for chances, Fresno. You've, both your strikers are off. You're down to 10 men, and they gift you a free shy at goals, and you make it easy for the goalkeeper. Go ahead, Hamilton. Go ahead, Hamilton. Sorry, I'm... I'm... Kurimoto scored one in 27 this season. Maybe we know why. <laughs> Kurimoto here! For Bustamante. Corner coming. Well, credit to Fresno, they're fighting back with 10 men, and that's exactly what Adam Smith will want. He'll probably take the losses inconsequential to their position on the log table. What he's looking for is commitment from his players, and he's certainly getting that from the 10 men who are left on the pitch. Corner for Jamal Johnson. This time looking for Strong. Moses a square ball that Seaton was keen to go get. Good pressure from Seaton. Making it difficult for Fresno to knock the ball around. Entirely truthful here. This sub is maybe a little bit surprising given Adam Smith's recent options. It's going to be Juan Pablo Caffa. Perhaps it's a little bit of a defensive liability. It means he's going to leave Christian Cheney out on the bench tonight. Look, if anybody can thread a ball through for it, for, for someone not to yet, run not onto. Not yet, Adam. We're not ready yet. It is one Pablo Kaffa. He has got such a magical left foot and great at set pieces as well. But you're right. He's not the best defensive player. Maybe they'll just push him up and get him to work with the likes of Jamal Johnson and see if they can find a gap in this solid Orange County defense. I, I don't mean to overly second guess. Threat of all to who? Well, so I'm just picking out yeah. Jamal Johnson as the only one left who's yeah. put the pace up front. Bustamante uh, forward by trade. Yeah, Bustamante is the other one they could use. Well, it's Kevin Coleman coming on for Orange County. Hoffa for Jamal Johnson. Oh, okay. And uh, well, now Del Campo has come in, so they've changed the card. No, no, Del Campo is uh, giving Kaffa the captain's armband. There it is. Sub brought to you by Big One Zinc. Well, 
Jamal Johnson was the player I had one public cuff of passing the ball too, so that's not going to happen. So, Bustamante it is. Bustamante it is, yeah. Process of elimination. <laughs> Coleman, check on, it's the end of Harry Forrester. His goal in the 45th minute, the difference maker, eight win, perfect corner. And a great run. Oh, that's a fantastic header there to get that on goal, absolutely brilliant, but a well-worked free kick, running from deep into that near post space by Harry Forrester. Happy days for Orange County as they just continue winning, they can't stop winning. What a problem to have. Doctor, I can't stop winning. <laughs> Moses. Fresh into the game. Coleman. Both teams using that full allotment. Subs. Range all the way back to Hume. Check out the new OCSC merchandise arrivals for 2019, including new authentic jerseys that the players are wearing by Adidas. OrangeCountySoccer.com. It's a good exercise for Orange County. One nil up, one man up. How do you play out the game for the last 12 minutes? How do you keep control? Keep the ball, don't give away any silly opportunities. Chrysostomo, just saying. And make sure you leave with a 1-0 win. That's all you need in the playoffs. And again, good preparation for what might come up in the next few weeks. Kudis Lawal sent off a red card in the first half. Forty-first minute. A uh, elbow apparently extended into his marker on a set piece. Well, again, I didn't see enough for a yellow card. I didn't see enough for the first yellow card either when he slipped while making a tackle. But who'd want to be a referee and make those decisions in real time? We've watched it over and over. Can't really see it. But maybe the ref was at a different angle. I think for Kudus, just looking at his face afterwards, he was absolutely distraught when he came off. And you've done your detective work, and his red card is going to keep him out of the next or the first playoff match. Unless the disciplinary committee, in their wisdom, were to overturn that. We just saw Corey Whelan from Phoenix have his red card overturned last week. So it's not without precedent. Was his a straight red? Well, this was two yellows, and they might say, well, even a little hand in the face is enough for a, for a second yellow, so they might not overturn it. Time will tell. We'll see. We hope for his sake it does get overturned. Slip ball played ahead. Seaton on the turn, teeing it up. And that will roll wide from Godoy. Effort wasn't too far wide, was it, from Gio Godoy? It's come on nice and fresh, full of energy. Ball goes down here to Michael Seaton, and as always, he creates opportunities. And maybe there was just a deflection of the defender's foot that might have been absolutely on target, and the deflection just takes it around the post. Irvine, big fan of Grey's Anatomy. Which is that on Netflix? Cross here. Coleman. 
least he had a shot, a little bit off target, yes, but uh, shows he has confidence. Kevin Coleman, good to see at 21 years of age. And he'll be excited that he might just get to play a role in these playoffs. You never know, injuries, maybe the manager just feel, feels that he fits a certain type of team. That's what you play for when you come off the bench. Just play for the opportunity to just sneak yourself into this team somehow. Truthfully, I'm trying to get a, a feel for the attacking shape of Fresno, and they've had the ball so infrequently given the circumstances that I've really struggled to figure it out. I think it's whoever's in the box at the time <laughs> is, is a de facto center forward. I'd be willing to bet that the 10 players on the field right now for Fresno have not played a minute together all year. You could be right. It's the Bustamante playing as frequently as he has. He has 79 minutes. Hoffa in pursuit, won't quite get there. Strong has played 500. Uh, I don't know. It's a, an odd combination. And yet, looking at it, Adam Smith I think must be quietly pleased that his team is still fighting, pushing forward. Here they are attacking, trying to get back in this match, even though they only have 10 men. It's been a it's been a solid performance without being spectacular. It's been a solid performance. But the biggest problem is they're still not winning games, Fresno, and you don't want to take that into the playoffs. And unfortunately, that's exactly how it looks. It looks like they're going to go into the playoffs with one point from the last 15 available points. It is exactly the opposite form to which Orange County are coming into it. Having won, assuming they win this, nine of their last 11 games. 27 of 33 available points. For the final, you think about it, I'm talking a third of the season. It's not a small sample mm -hmm. size. Absolutely. Here's the thing. If you had to say to me, pick one of these managers to be at this moment in time, you'd have to pick Orange County because all the momentum's with them, all the confidence is with them. But don't write off Fresno. They are such a good team, and they have been such a good team. And everything's going against them. Be fair. Kudos the Wild, two, two iffy yellows, and he gets sent off. It's just been a tough run recently for Fresno. Ball line across, that will get over Seaton and hop along the line on Coleman's service. The result in an Elijah Martin throw. Best case scenario is that that was actually a red card straight and not a second yellow as well. well I'll raise that that might have been a question there. Oh, I just Welcome went into to the, the living room. <laughs> Scott. Was he the cameraman? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was only a small bump. He didn't get taken out like he'd run full steam into him and knocked him over. It's just a flesh wound. Come on, Scott. You can handle it. So here we are, Orange County doing the professional thing. You have to play the clock down at 1-0. You play the clock down. It's up to the team in white to come get the ball from you. And that way you stretch them. You make them come out of their defensive block to come and get the ball. And then you try and counter into the space. Seaton slips it ahead. Coleman crosses. Chance to finish now. Saved away from the line. And it's a penalty. It's handled on the line. Oh, it's going to be a straight red. A straight red. And that means he's out for the first round of the playoffs. Ramon Martín Del Campo is out for the first round now. And Fresno positively imploding. In some ways, not even of their own doing. When I said things couldn't get worse for them, I was wrong. It is getting worse. It's just a terrible spell of bad luck. Good play, Orange County. Good strike there. 
he looks, he's got the guilty look on his face, Ramon Del Campos. I think he knew what he was doing. There he is getting back. Oh, he's trying to get his hand in, but it does hit his arm. But it's a penalty, no question. Is it a red card? I guess that's the letter of the law. He's not happy. He knows he's going to miss the next match. You don't need a lip reader to figure uh, this out. Disaster for Fresno. They don't deserve it. They've played so well. Soccer gods are against them at the moment. Wow. And yet not much the referee can do if he sees it. Yeah, he's, he's saying my arm was tucked in, but it hit his arm, so... These days, any contact with the hand, the referees tend to give it. Well, apologies for some of the language that may have come through. Fresno staff will help usher Del Campo back to his seat alongside his teammate, Kudus Lawal. Fresno finishes with nine men. And Cochran, who has made penalty saves against Phoenix and RGV in the last five. Try and stop Aiden Quinn. Quinn scores. And Orange County grabbed the five seed with both hands. They're going into the playoffs, winners of nine of 11. Yeah, they've been probing, haven't they? Well taken penalty, by the way. Sends the keeper the wrong way, just inside the post or off the post. Fans are delighted, but to be fair to Orange County, they've been probing, they've had the extra man, they've been trying to find a way through this dogged defense. Yeah, it just comes off the post on the way in. A bit of a risky penalty, you don't want to get it right off the post, maybe inside, but not off the post. Nonetheless, Aiden Quinn tucks it in the back of the net, and Orange County look to be the team that you do not want to meet in the playoffs. Aiden Quinn, goal number eight in the 88th. And Kafa was shown a yellow card. One would almost ass assuredly assume was for dissent. <laughs> yeah. The captain has to say something there, no? Uh, you, can't, but you can't blame the referee. That's just the rule these days. Anything seen as a deliberate handball to stop a goal scoring opportunity is going to get you a red card. Now, was it deliberate? Well, you assume so. He's, a he's on the line. He's covering the goalkeeper. Was it a handball? Yeah, his arm was tucked in, but it still hit his hand. Oh, it's such a tough rule these days, the handball rule. We see it all over the, all over Europe, all over the US, MLS, and USL. That you know, often penalties and red cards given for the most innocuous of handballs, but that seems to be the rule. Meanwhile. Realize Braden's got a bit of an arm injury himself. His left arm is wrapped here. up. Have a look at number four, Ramon Del Campo. Watch his right arm here. It's his arm. It's his arm's tucked in, though. It's not like his arm's out, but. Oh, oh it's a hard. Both these decisions tonight against Fresno have been very harsh. Can't say the referee's wrong. It's just. Oh. Man, it's. Uh, it's not going to be a happy locker room when this whistle goes in a few minutes' time. I think Adam Smith and his players are going to have their heads down at, at the end of this match because it just hasn't been their day and they've tried so hard and they've been so brave in trying to get on level terms at 1-0 down, only to concede the second. a second yellow to confirm on the first we uh, head into stoppage time the first player sent off the wall oh the wall was yeah there yeah. was the tackle where he slipped so that was a harsh yellow and then there was the assumed pushing and shoving an elbow in somebody's face but the defenders were pushing him as well so We'd want to be a referee, come to think of it. Here we are talking about who, you know, how tough it is for Fresno. How tough it is a referee to make those sort of decisions that have a massive impact sending a player off a pitch. Is, is he holding shin guards? He is. He is. I, 
have to imagine Seth those Moses. Are Del, Del Campos, maybe? Or his own that have fallen out. He wants to try and put them back in. Huh. Well, if you're Fresno, one could very easily argue that uh, it's going to come down to the names like Sam Strong and Christian Cheney to keep their season alive next week due to these impending red card suspensions. Orange County, they're going to walk away from tonight feeling like a million dollars. This is whether Braden Cloutier felt they could make a statement tonight or not. Very much a statement in my mind. I think this whole run of nine wins from 11 is a statement. It's, it's fantastic form. And although the next match will be away, I think they will go there very confident that they can have a long run in these playoffs. Because they are the form side, no question about it. Look at the fans in the background jumping up and down. Wonderful to see. Happy days here at Orange County. Moses trying to make himself big. Shot from Coleman to flex. Coleman to There's the, the answer to your question. It's actually his <laughs> shin guard, Seth <laughs> Moses. He carried those for a full two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's lost at the entire match, so that's that's great news for Fresno. He's a crucial player in midfield. Tough, strong, physical. So he should be available for the playoffs by the looks of it. Coleman sidestepping Chrysostomo in Orange County it looks like they may settle for a 2-0 win against a now nine-man Fresno Daniel Chrysostomo back heel off the mark from Seton levels this out Van Wolfgang. And the referee will blow for full time. Orange County seals up the number five. Brayden Cloutier gets the job done tonight. They will go on the road to Real Monarchs to begin their playoff run. And Fresno looks at as the number three seed. The hosting the eventual number six. His identity will be known in mere minutes. Man of the match is presented by Body Armor, Harry Forrester. The game winning goal in the 45th minute. Yeah, fantastic near post. Had a good run to get himself in that position at the head of his defenders. Great flick on with the head. And the vital first goal. Brilliant goal for Harry Forrester. Tough one, though, for Fresno. And Fresno's opponent has just gone final, El Paso will go to Fresno. Here is tonight's Save of the Game. It's presented by CISO Share, moving security programs forward. Due with that save there from Kurimoto. Bad ball back from Kisostomo. And the goalkeeper comes up trumps. And in this match, Due's had to make one or two crucial saves. But for the goalkeeper, it might not have been as easy as it looked at the end. He's played a vital part in this fantastic run for Orange County. Well, the county line coalition is in love tonight. It may be the end of their home slate. You never know. As it stands now, they've gone from 14th to 5th. And they're looking forward to a road game in Salt Lake to begin the playoffs. We'll wrap it up with highlights after this.
think all premium fuels are the same? New Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline is engineered with four levels of defense against gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. <laughs> that helps keep your engine running like new. So maybe it's time to unthink what you think you think about premium fuel. Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. It's fuel for thought. Every single game mattered. Believe that. The Western Conference going down to the final seconds of the regular season. Orange County gets the job done here. Highlights brought to you by 7-Up. Do more with 7-Up. And on this night, Orange County did more than Fresno. They grab a lead right before halftime. They had chances before that, though. Michael Seaton, power, pace, comes in there, goes again. CJ Cochran comes out and makes a really good save at his feet. A brave save, but more Orange County pressure. Long ball right up to the far post. Keeper comes, doesn't get it. Michael Seaton heads it, and Mickey Daly off the line. The big center back clears it as the ball is about to go in the net to keep the clean sheet, but it wasn't for long because, again, CJ Cochran battling in the air to try and get that ball. Michael Seaton beats him, and there's that first yellow. It's a slip. I don't know if we can actually see the slip, but as he comes in, kudos to Wally's left foot just goes from underneath him. There's a second one there where he's deemed to have pushed Michael Seaton in the face, and all of a sudden, two yellows, and he's off. Inside 40 minutes. Staggering. Luol off. Emotional. 45th minute. Quinn. Perfection. Yeah, great run. Great near post header. We talked about those crosses earlier on. CJ Cochran having all sorts of problems. Well, no one picking up Harry Forrester. Now there's a chance for Fresno to get back, back into it. Chrysostomo with a horrendous back pass. Kirimoto. And Dewey makes a crucial save. Now that was the moment for me the game changed. Because at 1-1, one, one, it's a whole different game. He doesn't take the chance, Kurimoto. Keeper makes the save. <laughs> Zach Ellis Hayden can't believe it. <laughs> then opportunities for the home side here. A turn, a strike, handball. Ramon Martin Del Campo. And it's tough as it is, it's going to be given as a handball. And because he's the last man on the line, it's going to be given as a red card. And a second red card of the night for Fresno. That means both, in theory, out for the first round of the playoffs. And Aiden Quinn bags his eighth goal to go along with his seventh assist in the season finale and Orange County 2-0 winners. Pro Sport presenting the full-time stats. And look, Fresno didn't create a lot before they went down a man after that low block and they never made it work. No, they didn't. I mean, two shots, one on target. It's not going to win you any games. They had one chance, Kurimoto didn't take it. Their possessions one third to Orange County's two thirds. So, in every sense, that they struggled tonight. But the two red cards absolutely killed them. And uh, they live to fight another day. And it's a day it's going to be against El Paso. This is official. The final bracket in the West. In the East, well, Pittsburgh could still jump to the one line. They play Birmingham tomorrow. Birmingham cannot move up. Nashville. Currently, the number one could drop to number two pending that result. And it'll be Orange County at Real Monarchs and Fresno hosting El Paso to begin the playoffs next Saturday night. Both avoiding the, the playing game that Braden Cloutier was so, frankly, indifferent about. <laughs> well, they avoid it. 2 0 win. Phenomenal performance. Remember when they were 14th? Remember when they couldn't get 11 players pulling in the same direction? Those days long over for Orange County. For Fresno, their struggles continue. Producer Eric Falero, director Jose Bueso, Miguel Manella, Annette Reyes, Gary Bailey alongside. For our Vista World Link team, Mike Watts saying good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.